Power Station at Berkeley NYC presents Studio Spotlight with Ian Kagey. Lawrence Manchester is a staple of the New York City recording scene. Starting his career at Power Station in the 1990s, Lawrence has carved out a prolific career as a producer and engineer on countless film and TV scores, music albums, and Broadway cast recordings. In addition to that work, Lawrence has been the music mixer on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon since the show's inception. This job, which usually happens in a multi-million dollar TV studio at 30 Rockefeller Center in New York City, has now in the midst of the pandemic had to adapt to being a completely at-home production. This involves all segments being filmed, edited, assembled, and released remotely on an incredibly tight schedule. I got to speak with Lawrence about how the workflow has evolved and what it's been like to continue to produce high-level content in this new remote environment. Yeah, we're, uh, we're a couple of months into this now, um, and it has involved, it evolved incrementally. We never missed a beat, actually. We, um, we started doing shows right away. I think we showed one repeat um, on a Friday, and then the following Monday started um, doing some best of clip shows, but with some live introductions from Jimmy, he would set them up and then we would show clips from, from prior episodes. And then the following week we did longer segments with Jimmy and fewer clips. And then um, shortly after that, we went into full length shows produced in this remote fashion. And, you know, thank goodness for the technology we have today with internet, with, with, with Zoom conferencing, and the high quality you can shoot with, with personal smartphones and all that stuff. I mean, that's what's getting us through this. It's how we're conducting this uh, discussion now, but it's also how a lot of the TV shows and the news programs especially have, have adapted. Every morning we have a Zoom production meeting with uh, everybody that I used to work with uh, shoulder to shoulder at 30 Rock. We all get on and uh, talk through the, the day, the, the, the show that we're putting together that day, but also future episodes for the next few days and into the following week. Things that require lead time or, or scripts to be written or music to be composed. Um, that's what we did before. Uh, we're, we're still doing that now just in this remote fashion and using... Uh, servers to upload files back and forth, um, secure sites to collaborate remotely and stay very organized in terms of the deadlines and the lead times that are required to make sure that things are delivered on time to keep this machine uh, rolling. That's always been the, the, the process, but now it has to have a little bit more organization and, and um, advance notice to pull things off because it might require shipping equipment out to somebody. It might require coordinating people that are on different time zones. It might require um, uh, some, some back and forth in the post-production process, which before you'd all just crowd around the same screen and make your edit decisions that way. Now it all has to be pushed back and forth and notes are passed around in a, in a slower fashion. So it's kind of the same level of work taking place. It's just, um, done a little a, a little slower and and um, decentralized but um, the the goal the mark is is still very high what's the what's the lead time it's still same day um, it's it's you know the show needs to be topical for the jokes to land there there may be elements that are taped ahead of time um, in order just for scheduling, but but generally it's it's all still produced the same day. When when we're doing as many shows as we are, you, it's kind of difficult to get that far ahead of yourself because you're always creating a show. When does the audio get sent to you in the process? It's all case by case. Anything that, that the roots are contributing to the show still comes my way. I mix them and and deliver them. Musical guest segments are kind of varied. A lot of musicians have home recording setups now, and so when you're watching uh, those performances, what you're usually seeing is them filming themselves, recording themselves, and usually mixing themselves too. They're usually delivering us finished pieces that reflect, you know, whatever they were capable of producing with the technology they had and the talents they had. Um, occasionally they might send something to me and, and I'll mix it or I'll, I'll do a touch-up pass on something um, just to make it ready for broadcast. It's, it's all case by case and I, I think, you know, when you watch you can kind of see everyone's take on what they were going for. It, it does vary. Speaking of that, have you been working out of your home? All the work that I've done uh, has been at home. So I've been mixing records. I've been mixing music for uh, The Tonight Show. I've been, I just finished mixing um, 
a special thing, uh, an at-home concert performance for Camila Cabello, um, and all of that has been from the comfort and chaos of <laughs> my, my home studio setup, which I, I never had a home studio setup. I kind of chose to work outside of the home, and having, having these great spaces in town to work out of was, was a real blessing and a pleasure. But um, now, by necessity, I've brought a bunch of gear home, and that's where I'm working these days. Yeah, that's a, it's a crazy world right now, certainly, for trying to produce these things. <laughs> but we're figuring it out, you know. We're, yes. yeah, we're, it's, awesome. it's amazing to see what people are, are, are able to put together and how people are finding new ways to collaborate and, and um, uh, you know, the barriers are being broken down and, and there's some really creative stuff coming out of it that we wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have had otherwise. Thanks again to Lawrence Manchester. To see what they've been up to, check out NBC.com slash The Tonight Show.